Protector TV, and I've got Hannah Yang, a top attorney with Barth Calderon, an asset protection estate planning business planning firm. And she is going to get into the weeds with me. We have a great discussion about A Trust versus A B Trust and how to look at your estate planning once a spouse passes away. It's a very important topic. Let's go check it out. Hi everybody, welcome to Wealth Protector TV. This is Paul Hitchcock with Barth Calderon and we're an asset protection estate planning business planning firm. Really excited to have my colleague Hannah Yang here. Welcome Hannah. Thanks Paul, glad to be here again. Yeah, and Hannah's one of our top attorneys at the firm and we're talking about a very important topic here, Hannah. I want to just jump into this and this is transferring property when one spouse passes away. And so what do we need to know here? Yeah, that's a really great question. And that's, I like to bring that up when I uh, meet with married couples, uh, because that's what they want to know. They want to know how will our property pass between each other when, when one spouse dies. It's a really important question. Really quick note though, because we are in California and California is a community property state. So I just yep. wanted to characterize how those assets, um, it, how the law considers um, any property uh, between married couples. So any income or assets that are acquired during the the um, the lifetime of the marriage, that's considered both spouse's property. So okay. let's say even if one spouse worked and one spouse stayed at home, um, that's uh, both spouse's property. That's community. Got property. it. Which is 50-50? It's 100% both. Oh, oh, got it. Oh, each own 100%. Okay, each got it. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but then there are certain things that are considered separate property. So, for, um, or any property that, let's say, one spouse acquired beforehand, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, didn't mix in with, um, let's say, income that they earned during the marriage. So, key example would be maybe a condo that one spouse owned, uh, or that um, one spouse purchased, paid off, um, and then brought into the marriage and kept separate. That would be considered um, separate property. But, uh, where it gets tangled, Hannah, is if like you you have a property that you bring into the marriage, but then maybe your other spouse starts paying the mortgage on it, you start commingling. That's when it kind of gets a little bit confusing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. But let's say uh, we're, we're just using the classic example of a, co a poor uh, um, couple that college sweethearts got married. Everything that they've built, their wealth has been together while mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a lot of times what, what we'll see. Um, and so the simplest way that uh, such couples might elect is where everything to spouse and then to children in equal shares. So upon one spouse's death, everything that the couple own continues to stay in one joint trust. Let's say they set up a, a trust. It will stay as a single trust from the beginning, um, even after one spouse passes. Okay. But another way that couples might elect um, when one spouse dies is when is, um, and I, people might have heard the term AB trust. Yeah. So the trust will split into two, two trusts. So in one trust, the survivor's trust, the A trust, um, what will go into that is one half of the community property assets and okay. then any separate property assets of the survivor. And then in the other trust, the B trust, um, sometimes it's also known as the bypass trust or the credit shelter trust, uh, the first to die spouse is half of community property assets. And then any of that first to die spouse's separate property assets will go into that. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it's split up. Yep. Yep. If that total, am the total amount that goes into that B trust is more than the federal estate, um, federal estate tax exemption amount, uh, which right now is pretty high, it's it's almost $13 million, then any amount greater than that would, would go into a third trust. I'm not going to cover the details of, you know, that third or C trust, but just so that you know that it could split into two trusts or, th uh, or three trusts. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And that 13 million is per person. These it's per person. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's per person. So, and that actually leads into, um, the next question, which is why, why do couples decide to split it up into an A trust and a B trust rather yeah. than keeping everything into, you know, in one trust and an, an A trust, keeping everything into an A trust? Why do we split it into A or B? And so one reason is that um, in the past when the federal estate tax exemption was lower, 
um, it was a way for couples um, to minimize estate taxes. And so um, splitting that joint estate into two trusts. Um, so actually going back. So and, and it was also a way where you can double up um, on that estate tax exemption because you used to not be able to um, use each other's estate tax exemptions. It was per person. Got it. So you'd move it over. Uh, divide up the estate, move it over into a separate trust. That way, only that piece would be taxed. Right. For estate taxes, the surviving right. spouse wouldn't. So you can minimize what potentially would be due for estate taxes. Got it. Okay. Exactly. But now there's a new legal tool called portability. And so even without splitting up the trust into two parts, you the surviving spouse can save up the first to die spouse's um, unused estate tax exemption. Ah. Later, as long as they file an election um, in a timely manner, it used to be within nine months, but the IRS has extended that deadline to five years from the date of the death. So as long as that election is filed in a timely manner, um, you can still double up on that exemption or you can still um, say, uh, use uh, whatever has not been used by the deceased spouse. You can use that exemption amount. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay, so there's less of a reason to create the AB trust today uh, for for that reason. You can you can use it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and then another reason is that it's a way for the first to first spouse to die. Uh, it's it's a way for them to maintain some say, some control over their assets when they pass. So whatever goes into that B trust, um, they can lock in some terms. They can oh. lock in some beneficiaries. Uh, so that they can't be changed. They can also um, lock in some of what the surviving spouse can do with those assets. So for example, the surviving spouse may be able to touch the income of any property that's put into the B trust, but maybe not the principal. So, so that's interesting, Hannah, because where I see that coming into play is maybe there's a second marriage and uh, you know there's kids from previous marriages Right. And the the first spouse that passes away says, hey, I want my inheritance to go to my kids, right. but my surviving spouse, I love them. I want them to be able to use the income while they're alive and so forth. Uh, so is that is that a good way to put it? Does that make sense? That's exactly what it is. And so yeah. we'll see. It's it's common for blended families um, okay. to, to, to use these trusts. And people who just want to just make sure that um just in case life happens right um right nobody knows what tomorrow will look like and so just making sure that you know the children that a couple have between themselves that they're no matter what circumstance um that somehow they're taken care of in some yep i like to say yesterday's history tomorrow's a mystery you know yeah <laughs> oh yeah great no this is good for estate planning because like you said it's, it, you know, I've heard you say before, it's a roadmap mm -hmm. for taking control of your planning and making sure that, you know, you, that the design of it is what, you know, what happens is what you want to happen. Absolutely. And so planning is key. And um, a third reason, just finally, that I've seen people choose to go with the AB or the ABC trust is that, um, so the first to die spouse's assets, um, that's not considered the surviving spouse's assets, right? That those get locked up into an irrevocable trust. That's not considered part of the surviving spouse's estate. So let's say the surviving spouse gets into a lawsuit or a car accident oh. and is oh, yeah. facing creditors. Um, so technically, because it's not the surviving spouse's assets, um, there is some asset protection there, depending on what type of you know power the surviving spouse has over those trust assets. There. Um, the varying degrees of asset protection that are built into that uh, that portion of interesting us. interesting yeah wonderful wonderful Hannah great information I want to ask you you know, for people that are watching this so we you know I want to make the point we always offer a complimentary planning assessment you can get one on one with Hannah to take a look at your planning whether you don't have it and trying to figure out what it's all about or you haven't looked at it in a long time you know laws change. Happy to get one-on-one -on -one with Hannah and around this video, wherever you're watching this, because we stream this everywhere, there's a way to connect with Hannah, get on her calendar. And Hannah, what is that? You you get on Zoom with, with somebody and you and it's sort of a thoughtful dive into what they're doing and, and sort of giving them some input on what they can do. 
Absolutely, yeah. So anyone can um, call in for a complimentary consultation. It could be in person. It could be through Zoom or through phone. I'll usually send um, a financial questionnaire for uh, potential yeah. to fill out. That way, when we're going through, um, you know, this meaningful dialogue during the consult, we can talk about things like how how should property pass, and so that will allow me to inform them of what their just uh, you know their options are, and so that they can decide whether they they want to move forward. Yeah, awesome, Hannah. Great information. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for listening. And Hannah, I know we're going to have you back, so we'll see you again here soon. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay.